Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's special live webinar. My name is Raleigh White, and I'll be your moderator today for what I know is going to be a fun and entertaining educational experience for all of us. As we have two presenters on tap and ready to share their ideas on a fascinating and new trading opportunity. Now, Anthony Trister has been trading since about 2004 and spent much of his time as a retail trader struggling to find some consistency in the Forex markets. But recently, he's decided to team up with some of the best traders in the world and is now focused not only on diversifying his trading portfolio, but also providing top-notch trading education and system development. Now, Chris Dunn has been a professional futures trader for most of his career and just returned from a 30-country tour of the world where he conducted multiple live seminars and trading events. Aside from being good friends and like-minded traders, Anthony and Chris now share a new passion, and that's making money trading Bitcoin. Now, I know that Bitcoin tends to get a negative rub in the mainstream press these days, but many of our Trading Pub members have asked us to dig a little deeper into this subject, and today's webinar is an attempt to address this demand. And with that, please join me in welcoming Anthony Trister and Chris Dunn to the Trading Pub and their presentation today on the ins and outs of trading Bitcoin. Gentlemen, the floor is now yours. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for that great introduction. Uh, yeah, that was quite an intro. Yeah. Awesome. I, I loved it. Yeah, well, we'll just uh, as Riley said, we're just so excited to talk to you about Bitcoin today. As he mentioned, with myself, I've actually been trading for a long, long time. And about 11 years ago, I started with Forex. And, you know, one of the things that I had found was when you try to go at it alone, it's a difficult road. So I actually have partnered up over the last decade with some of the top traders in the world and work with them on the business side of things. And I'm so fortunate to have uh, you know, met Chris about four years ago and, and, and partnered with Chris more recently when Bitcoin really came to the forefront of our attention. So that's really what all this is about today. And really the title of the webinar is Why Savvy Traders Are Flocking to Bitcoin, Claiming It As The Market to Trade and why some are even literally abandoning stocks and options each other markets for the higher accuracy of Bitcoin. So Chris, you ready to jump in with me and, and, get, and get and get everyone as, hopefully as, as, as excited about Bitcoin as we are? Hey, real quick guys, I'm curious. We've got a few hundred people in here. How many of you guys, well, let me say it this way. If you've never heard of Bitcoin before, if you feel like you know very little about what it is and how it works, just type a number one in the chat room. So if you've never heard about it or you feel like you don't really know that much about it, you've maybe you've heard about it on the news, but you're not really sure how it works, just type a one in the room. I'm just curious. Wow, okay, quite a few people. And type a number two in the room if you've ever taken a Bitcoin trade. Oh, the ones just stopped. <laughs> oh, there's a two. <laughs> there's a couple of twos. Uh, now, you know what I'm, cur okay. I'm curious to know? Um, type a, a number three in the room. We're going to run out of numbers soon. <laughs> Type of number three in the room, if you've heard of Bitcoin, if you kind of know what it is, in other words, you know it's some type of money, let's just leave it at the most basic form right now, but that's about all you know about it. Okay, there we go. A lot, that's what I thought, a lot of threes. So most people have heard of Bitcoin. They have a basic, basic understanding of what it is. You can sort of buy stuff with it and it, the price goes up and down, but that's probably about uh, all you know. So that's really obviously what, what today is about. And one of the things, we have a couple of missions today. One is obviously to educate you and tell you what Bitcoin really is because there is a lot of misinformation out there on Bitcoin. And the reason there's a lot of misinformation on, on Bitcoin is because the price has fluctuated, as you may be aware. And as a result of that, um, the mainstream media likes to say great things about Bitcoin when it's flying up and just destroy it when it's going down. So really, most people get their information from you know the talking heads on CNBC or what they're saying about it online. And it's just, it's really funny how, how much misinformation is that there is out there. So today is all about educating you about what Bitcoin really is, uh, educating you um, what's not, what, what's true about Bitcoin and what's not true about Bitcoin, because you may have some, some myths in your head that you think are real and they're not. We're going to debunk all those. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the opportunity of Bitcoin and how you can actually make money with Bitcoin, which is what we're currently doing right now. And that's, of course, the most exciting part. It's a fascinating technology, and that's kind of cool, but it's a lot more interesting when you can actually when the, when, the, when there's a very real opportunity out there and you can profit with Bitcoin. So um, go ahead, Anthony, Chris. if you don't mind, let me, let me jump in and kind of mention something. Um, 
whenever I first heard of Bitcoin a couple years ago, I thought what Chuck just said. I thought it was a pyramid scheme, some kind of scam, or some kind of like magic internet money. And look, guys, I'm a futures trader. I'm an equities trader. Like I'm, I'm in the real – I'm using my quotation hand marks. I'm a real trader, right? So whenever I heard about Bitcoin, I thought it was like binary options or you know one of the obscure markets. But hopefully today I'm going to show you what Bitcoin really is and the promise that it has. And I'm not here to pump Bitcoin or sell it by any means. I'm here to sell it as a trading vehicle. I've made good money trading it, and I want to show you how to do that how to do that so uh anthony you can take it away from here man okay cool i noticed also guys sorry i apologize all right so we're seeing volume is good now i see a lot of comments on the volume i'm just playing with a couple of things so this is our first time doing um a webinar with trading pub together so we're just working on the volume sounds like we're okay now okay good so yeah again just touching on what chris just said a lot of misinformation out there some people think it's a pyramid scheme or or it's it's like a penny stock and that is exactly what we want to talk, what we want to get through to everyone here, that that couldn't be further from the truth. So with that, let's just jump into the presentation, and we'll kind of touch on that as we move forward. So let's start out with a risk disclaimer, of course. And as, as, as you're used to seeing, probably if you've been on webinars before, and I'm sure so many of you had, the content is, this content today is for educational purposes only. This is not investment advice. Trading involves a high degree of risk, and we are not investment or trading advisors, and there's certainly no guarantees or certainties in trading. Many traders lose money, so don't trade with money you can't afford to lose, even in Bitcoin. All right, let's move on. So, all right, so let's talk about what we're, we're going to learn here today. So first of all, um, how Bitcoin works and why people are actually preferring to buy and sell products and services with this new form of currencies, currency I should say, over fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar. Chris, I know you like to launch in here a little bit about what, give the definition of a fiat currency is. Yeah, so fiat currency is basically something like the U.S. dollar um, where, you know, it's backed by the faith that people have in the government, okay? Um, the faith that people have in Bitcoin is in the math-based currency. predetermined and people have faith in it because they have faith in the system you don't need faith in people for it to work um, let's see now I can hear you loud and clear here but some people are saying the audio died well, Anthony, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do this because we're talking through your computer you go ahead and talk and then turn it over to me and I'll turn my mic on in the room um, okay. So. And then you turn your audio or your mic off. So I like to try to do it where we're both talking at the same time, but I don't think that's going to work. So um, no, we're I'm going to let you talk and then you, know, you just turn over to me and turn your mic off. I'm just wondering if it's for one or two people though, because um, some people are saying it's fine, it's okay. Um, so so just, just guys, sorry, we'll just we'll get this sorted out in the next 30 seconds here. So you can hear me coming through loud and clear, right? Just go ahead. It's okay now. All right. It's good to you. Okay, so I'm great. So Chris, now just do a quick test and see if, if you're good. Yeah, and you guys can hear me now? Or am I sounding like I'm in a bathroom? <laughs> okay, I think we're okay. Okay. I think we're good. All right. It's going to be fine. Okay, so we're just going to move on, and hopefully um, you, we'll be okay with the, uh, with the audio. Chris, why don't you go ahead and take the next bullet, and we'll see that uh, make sure you can come, you're coming through loud and clear. Sure, sure. So... Recently, there was a hundred million dollar investment in the Bitcoin technology um, from the New York Stock Exchange and three of the world's largest financial financial institutions. And this has actually created a really unique opportunity for traders. And quite frankly, it's probably the biggest opportunity that I've seen in over a decade. And I've been trading actively since about 2001. Um, I'm also going to talk about why Bitcoin is, in my opinion, one of the easiest markets to trade right now. Um, and I don't know how long that's going to last. It might be a year or two. It might be five years. I'm not really sure. But we kind of have this unique trading environment that's created a, a really nice um, arena for Bitcoin traders. Um, and then... We're going to talk about the three principles that I've used to have over a 90% accuracy on my Bitcoin trades that I've publicly posted. Um, I've made a lot of predictions over the past 18 months, and um, I'm over 90, I guess it's 92% accurate, and that's kind of a funny number. Like, I've never been 
anywhere close to that accurate in any other market before. And it's not because I'm like some prodigy trader. It's because of the unique kind of trading arena that we have right now in Bitcoin. Um, and I'll show you the charts. You know, one thing you should know is these charts don't actually trade like a ticker, like you just look it up, you know, on TradeStation or something like that. They're, it's actually a different platform. Um, and Anthony, I'll let you take the, the next couple of bullets here. Okay, cool. So um, we, as I touched on earlier, why Bitcoin is nothing like a penny stock. This is a very common misconception and how it's literally just as viable to trade as Apple, IBM, Microsoft, or, you know, dozens and dozens of other blue chip kind of companies. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Oh, Bitcoin, you know, it might crash or go to zero or, you know, you can't trade it. Uh, it's, not, it's not something that's safe to trade. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's, it, Bitcoin is it's here. It's here to stay. It's growing. We're going to explain more about the future of Bitcoin in a few minutes. But as far as an instrument to trade, man, it's, it's just as viable as Apple, IBM, and Microsoft, only it's so much easier and so much more profitable to trade. And we're also going to touch on other common myths and misconceptions about Bitcoin and why we love the negative media coverage. It's so good for traders, and we're going to explain all that as well. So that's what you're in for today. So you're going to learn a lot today. By the time you're done, you're probably going to know more about Bitcoin than anyone else in your neighborhood. So get ready for an exciting presentation. Cool. All right, guys. Um, well, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Chris Dunn. Um, I've been trading futures and stocks since 2001. And uh, I actually started trading Bitcoin in 2013. So, you know, as I mentioned, whenever I first heard about it, I actually got an email from one of my hedge fund buddies. And he was like, Chris, man, you got to check this Bitcoin thing out. It's, it's really going to explode. And whenever I looked at it, my first thought was, oh, no, here goes another penny stock pump and dump. Here goes another pyramid scheme, something like that. And he, he said, no, man, I, I know that price is going parabolic right now, but it really is like a legit thing. So I checked it out, and the more I read about it, the more I really actually liked it and actually believed that it had some promise. And so I started tinkering with it and actually um, buying some Bitcoin and just learning how it works because it really is a new form of money. Um, it's like digital cash or gold. And um, – you know, whenever I started trading it, I was actually very, very accurate. I was surprised at how easy it was to trade it. And um, so I started posting all of my trades publicly and actually gained a pretty big following in the digital currency trading community. Um, and then that's kind of what I'll show you in a little bit of some of the trades that I've taken. Um, but I'm also a world adventure junkie. I, um, I just got back from a year-long trip around the world. Um, I am still a full-time stock and futures trader, and this is my wife, Nikki, right here. Actually, just before this webinar, I got done doing a, uh, a live trading class for futures, um, but that's who I am. Uh, Anthony, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, cool. Thanks. So um, as we learned in the beginning, this is sort of the embarrassing thing when I started out trading. I lost just more money than I care to admit trading Forex because when I started out trading, I kind of really got sucked into the excitement of it without having any kind of a plan. I just thought I could, you know, make money when the markets moved around. Uh, so I struggled in the, in the beginning, going back about 10 years now, and realized pretty quickly that um, not having a trading plan it wasn't going to get me very far. So what I ended up really doing was partnering with some of the smartest, most successful traders in the entire industry. And I learned so much from them, worked with them uh, on the business side of things, and that's when things really started to come together for me in this industry. About four years ago, I met Chris and found my trading mentor. He's literally, of all the traders I've met and worked with, he's probably the best one that I've ever come across. And, and the reason, by the way, if you haven't heard of Chris, is because Chris spends all of his time on education and on system development. He doesn't spend time running around doing a dog and pony show. Um, he's focused on trading. So when I met Chris, I actually helped him spread the word to other people like me. And when Bitcoin came along about you know, a year and a half, two years ago, um, that's when things really came together for Chris and I. We'd been friends up, in, up until that point, you know, trading partners, friends. But when it came, when it came along, I remember when I, I first called Chris up, it was about, about a year and a half ago or so now, and I was actually doing a trip around the world for about six months with my girlfriend who's in that picture. And I called him up and asked him what he knew about Bitcoin, and sure enough, he'd already been trading Bitcoin, no surprise, because it's Chris. And we just both got so excited about the opportunity, we put our heads together, and that kind of brings us to where we are right now, um, building you know, just a community of traders who are really excited about Bitcoin and, and sort of spreading the message about Bitcoin. That's pretty much who I am. 
All right, so let's let's do a quick intro because I know like probably 80% of people in here haven't heard of Bitcoin before, so I'm going to play this quick one-minute video for you just so you understand um, what it Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is the first decentralized digital currency. Bitcoins are digital coins you can send through the internet. Compared to other alternatives, Bitcoins have a number of advantages. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net without going through a bank or clearinghouse. This means that the fees are much lower. You can use them in every country. Your account cannot be frozen, and there are no prerequisites or arbitrary limits. Let's look at how it works. Several currency exchanges exist where you can buy and sell Bitcoins for dollars, euros, and more. Your Bitcoins are kept in your digital wallet on your computer or mobile device. Sending Bitcoins is as simple as sending an email, and you can purchase anything with Bitcoin. The Bitcoin network is secured by individuals called miners. Miners are rewarded newly generated Bitcoins for verifying transactions. After transactions are verified, they are recorded in a transparent public ledger. Bitcoin opens up a whole new platform for innovation. The software is completely open source and anyone can review the code. Bitcoin is changing finance the same way the web changed publishing. When everyone has access to a global market, great ideas flourish. Bitcoins are a great way for businesses to minimize transaction fees. It doesn't cost anything to start accepting them, and it's easy to set up. There are no chargebacks, and you'll get additional business from the Bitcoin economy. For more... All right. So that was just kind of an overview of what Bitcoin is. And I just want to talk a little bit about my perspective on it. Um, so, as they said in the video, it's a decentralized digital currency. W what does that mean? Okay, decentralized means it's not controlled by any one government. Okay, so it, it was created in 2009, um, and it was created. Nobody actually knows who created it. It was a kind of an underground. Uh, pseudonym who actually put the initial code out, but it is a math-based open source currency, which means anybody can go in and actually review how the system is set up. That's why it's trusted so much is because anybody can look at it and knows with absolute certainty how it's going to work for the next 40 or 50 years. Um, and it spins just like virtual cash or gold, meaning I can send anybody around the world millions of dollars instantly with no fees and with no government red tape. That's kind of the, the biggest thing here. And this has those two big to fail banks really scared because this is going to change the financial services industry. Bitcoin to me is kind of what the internet was in the early nineties. You know, back in the day, nobody really thought the internet was going to be used for anything other than sending messages and, you know, just some very basic, maybe government stuff. But look at where the internet is today. I mean, it has literally transformed our world. And I think Bitcoin's going to do the same thing. Um, it's also going to change, just so you know, currency is only one part of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to change the way that we do real estate transactions, how we handle contracts and disputes. And there's all this like cryptocurrency 2.0 stuff that's coming down the line. Just like when the internet first started, nobody knew that there was going to be a Facebook, right? Nobody knew that we were going to be trading online and we were going to be able to have hundreds of people in the same room all trading together, right? Nobody saw that back in the 90s. And a lot of people, you know, when it, whenever the internet was coming out and AOL online, everybody was kind of like, Oh man, I don't need email. Why do I need this? But today, every single person who's in business uses the internet. I think that's what Bitcoin's going to be like in the, the near future. Um, so why is Bitcoin important today? Let's talk about why it's even gaining traction. Um, the first thing is, and as a lot of you guys know, fiat currencies are getting inflated and devalued like they're going out of style. Um, you know, recently the U.S. dollar has been on a bit of a tear. But there's no question that a lot of countries around the world, including the U.S., might be in some kind of trouble with the amount of debt that we have, overinflation. And look, I'm not a doom and gloom guy, but I do respect guys like uh, Jim Rogers, who is a very wealthy investor and author of one of my favorite books, Adventure Capitalist. He said, you know, there is no sound currency anymore. There's no paper money in 2015 that's going to be worth much of anything. And, you know, that's a very important thing that I think we need to think about. Um, 
Another reason it's important is because moving money right now is expensive and comes with a lot of friction, right? Think about whenever you bought your, your last home. How long did it take you to do your real estate closing, right? Um, how long did it take you to do wires? How expensive was it to do that closing? This is going to change the way that works, and it's going to make it a lot less expensive for everybody. And just to give you an example, there was a, a transaction where $150 million worth of Bitcoin was transferred somewhere in the world um, with no government red tape, and it cost pennies to send it. To do that with fiat currency with dollars, number one, would cost a lot of money. Number two, would cost, you know, take a lot of um, tax in, in government forms. And, um, you know, it, it just, it wouldn't be as easy. So another big thing that I'm really uh, excited about with Bitcoin is that there are currently billions of people around the world that don't have access to basic banking services like credit cards, checking accounts, stuff like that. Um, in Zimbabwe, you know, hyperinflation, uh, no national currency. In Argentina, they're, they're having, you know, currency controls, inflation. You know, there's, there are countries around the world where the citizens are getting fed up and they're saying, you know what? We, our government's corrupt or non-existent. We have no way to transact in a way that we feel comfortable. So they're actually preferring digital currencies like Bitcoin over their own government currencies. And we're actually starting to see that in the U.S. as well. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about some major influencers that are actually backing Bitcoin. Um, one of the major ones is my, one of my favorite guys, Richard Branson, founder of Virgin. He says, I've invested in Bitcoin because I believe in its potential. The capacity it has to transform global payments is very exciting. Um, and then Bill Gates is actually a huge proponent of digital currencies, and he's doing a lot of really cool stuff in Africa right now where he's bringing basic banking services to people in villages that could never afford or have the resources to open a bank account. But with a, a $5 cell phone, they can transact in Bitcoin. It's so cool, guys. I, like, I get so excited talking about this because not only is it a moneymaker, but it really is going to change the world. Um, Eric Schmidt, the chairman of Google, uh, Bitcoin is a remarkable achievement and has the ability to create something that is not duplicatable in the digital world. So this has enormous value. What that means is it solves the problem of double spending. Um, there were digital currencies before Bitcoin. In fact, digital currencies go back to the 80s, but there was always this problem of forgery where you could basically spend whatever your e-currency was and then spend it again. That's the big problem that Bitcoin has actually solved. Um, Peter Thiel, uh, I think Bitcoin is the first digital currency that has the potential to do something like actually change the world. Um, and then love him or hate him, John McAfee, uh, Bitcoin will be ev everywhere and the world will have to readjust. World governments will have to readjust. The Winklevoss twins, if you guys ever saw the social network, um, you know, these are kind of the original founders of Facebook. Uh, and they said, there's nothing predictable or transparent about the U.S. dollar. Bitcoin brings the promise of email to the finance sector. I thought that was pretty interesting how they said that. Um, now it's instant and effectively free to send money anywhere. Now, these guys, what's interesting about this is they are um, actually creating ETFs around Bitcoin and digital currencies. So as we speak, and I, I've actually talked to a lot of these guys that are creating um, futures, options, and ETFs around digital currencies. So trust me when I say this, and a year ago, if you would have asked me this, I'd say, I don't know. But right now, Bitcoin is not going anywhere as a, a trading vehicle. If anything, over the next few years, you're going to hear more and more about it, and you're going to want to wish that you got in earlier. And I don't mean that in like a speculative, like, buy now before Bitcoin goes to a, you know, $5,000 a coin. I'm not a, a pumper, right? I'm not out here saying like, you just need to go buy Bitcoin. I've made a lot of money shorting Bitcoin. So I like it as a trading vehicle. I'm not just a buy and hope investor. Um, Anthony, you want to kick in a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm just touching on what you last said. Um, I think the point Chris is trying to make is that whether you, you know, love it or hate it, not only is it here to stay, but it's, it's absolutely growing. The technology along with it is getting more and more elaborate, more expansive. It's going to weave its way into the fiber of our everyday lives, 
and you're going to hear more and more about it. We're still at the very, very early stages, but when you see people like Richard Branson and, and Bill Gates and, and John McAfee and the founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel, I mean, these are huge, these are, these are the titans of business, the titans of the people who are in the forefront of, 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 our, of the biggest companies in the world, and they're all backing Bitcoin. That should tell you something. So the next time you hear someone dissing Bitcoin on CNBC, you can really see through them. And that's one of the main points we wanted to get across here today, that if Bitcoin is here to stay, it's growing, and it's being supported by some of the largest people in the world. So companies, as you can see, who are currently not only accepting but preferring Bitcoin, Microsoft, Dell, Expedia, Amazon, PayPal, eBay, Shopify, Overstock. Next time you see an advertisement on TV for Overstock.com, you're going to see right on your TV screen a big stamp saying, we accept Bitcoin. So they are promoting Bitcoin because they understand the CEO of Overstock is a huge proponent of Bitcoin, and they understand the value and the future of Bitcoin. So that's, again, one of the main points we wanted to hammer home here. So now you know something about Bitcoin, a little more than what you may have heard um, when the press likes to bash it because it, the price has gone down. And by the way, in a few more minutes in the, in the webinar, we're going to tell you why we absolutely love when the press bashes Bitcoin. It <laughs> couldn't it. be better yeah. for us traders. And it has a little something to do with what Chris said a minute ago when he said he loves to short Bitcoin. And some of his most profitable trades have actually been shorting Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just hammer this real fast. Uh, the five phases of Bitcoin, I've actually only got four of them on there because these are the most important. But the first one is, uh, I just want to give you a little history so you can know where Bitcoin started and where it is today. And then we'll jump into the, the trading of Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin started in 2009, as I said, and whenever it got started, it was really only like nerds and tinkerers that were playing with it. It really had no real value. Um, and then in the early adopter phase from 2011 to 2013, it started to attract interest from investors, entrepreneurs, and you know, kind of early adopters who were just buying Bitcoin. They didn't really know what it was going to do. And in that time period, guys, there were three major boom and bust cycles, okay? There were three major rises and crashes in the price of Bitcoin. Now, whenever you hear that, right, that doesn't sound like something that's very stable, right? Like, what do you mean it had rises and crashes in the price of it? It sounds like a penny stock pumping up, right? Not exactly. Whenever I first saw it, that's what I thought. But in a second, I'll show you why it's actually different. And this is something that nobody on TV really wants to even admit, but it's, it is the difference. Um, and then last year in 2013 and 14, we literally saw the biggest world-class VCs starting to invest in Bitcoin, meaning venture capitalists, angels, you know, entrepreneurs were taking this to the next level. I'm an angel investor in Austin, Texas, and um, there's a group here that specifically, their only goal in life is to work with startups in the Bitcoin community because they know that this is way more than just a currency. Um, and then moving into this year and beyond, you know, the Wall Street phase, um, institutional investors are moving money into Bitcoin. And like we mentioned, um, just two weeks ago, the New York Stock Exchange, along with some big, big guys, pumped over 100 million bucks into the biggest Bitcoin trading exchange. So even the New York Stock Exchange knows where this is headed. All right. Now, I've seen some, uh, some questions and comments coming into the chat. I want to just hammer on some myths and misconceptions. The first and the biggest one is Bitcoin is a bubble. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a pump and dump, however you want to say that. And I want to just go back in history and show you what has happened and where I think it's headed today. So this is the first bubble back in 2011. Bitcoin went from 50 cents to 32 bucks back to $2, right? Now, if you looked at Bitcoin at the end of this, you'd say, like, if this was a live chart, you would say, oh, my God, that was a big pump and dump. That, this thing's over, right? But then, in early 2013, this happened. And this is when I actually started taking it pretty seriously. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It had a boom and bust, but it's still going. What's up with this? Went from 35 bucks to $266 and crashed back to 50. And this is where I cut, it kind of piqued my interest. And I was like, okay, so what, what is happening here? It's not going away. It's only growing. The market cap is actually getting bigger, and, and user adoption is picking up. And then this happened in the end of 2013. This was epic. And if you heard about Bitcoin, chances are this is when you actually heard about it for the first time. And if you haven't heard about it until today, don't feel bad. There's still probably 5 billion people on the planet 
what it is. It went from a hundred bucks to over a thousand, and then it's given back much of those gains even to where we are today. It's been extremely, extremely volatile. Now, the average person would look at that, and none of you people in here are average because you're all traders, I assume. So you guys understand the value of volatility, right? Volatility is a good thing. Whenever you have volatility and liquidity, what does that spell? Opportunity, right? So I just want to show you some bubbles that Apple stock had, right? This was uh, around the uh, dot-com boom, 2000, right? Had a 100% boom and bust. Uh, this was a few years ago during the financial crisis. Had another 100% boom and bust. But where's Apple today? It's knocking on all-time highs, isn't it? Right? Um, so this is the most important piece of the equation, guys. When it comes to is Bitcoin, does Bitcoin have long-term viability, this is what really matters. You know, and it's so funny. Whenever Bitcoin's price is going up, guess what the media says about Bitcoin? Oh, it's the next best thing. It's going to take over the dollar on and on and on when bitcoin's price is going down what do they say about bitcoin oh bitcoin's over you know they they literally drive the price up and down with their comments it's crazy but this is the most important thing daily bitcoin transactions this is going all the way back from its inception to a couple days ago okay so um these are actually transactions these are trades these are purchases this is all the transactions that happen on a day-by-day -day basis and there's there's a little bit of data missing here that's why you can see um, some big blips there but if you look at the trend you'll notice that in mid 2012 this is when things really started to pick up and as of a couple days ago we were hitting all-time highs with daily usage of Bitcoin this is what matters the price is irrelevant the you know in any new technology asset store of value currency whatever any new tangible valuable thing you have price discovery so that's why there's volatility but as far as it being viable you can see people are using it you know we're seeing over a hundred thousand transactions a day and that's only growing I just want to jump in and add something here Chris the parallel that you drew earlier with Apple and Bitcoin it's important to point out that when Apple's price dropped um, I don't think people were thinking that Apple was going away it's not like they're gonna stop making iPhones so that's important to understand. The, 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 it, it's, the media just, if, if the price goes up, they say good things, and it goes down, they say bad things. And some people think that because Bitcoin was at $1,000 and now it's at you know, a couple hundred dollars that it's going away. It, it doesn't matter what the price of Bitcoin is at. It's completely irrelevant, just in the same way it doesn't matter what Apple's price is at. Apple's going to keep selling iPhones and keep selling computers. They're not going away just in the same way that Bitcoin isn't going away. All that matters is really is sales, right? And that's pretty much what, we, what you're looking at right here, the transactions of Bitcoin is just proving the viability of it as as a currency, as a platform, as as a technology. It's only growing and growing. So don't let the price worry you. In fact, like Chris said also earlier, the volatility of Bitcoin is the reason that we're sitting at a 92% plus track record because that volatility makes it literally the best instrument to trade that I've ever seen in my decade plus of trading. And I think Chris would probably agree with me as well with that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. And um yeah, I just I, I see some more comments coming in. Yeah, John, he said the blockchain has amazing potential other than currency. Absolutely, there's a lot of other things that are happening with Bitcoin, and it's the protocol. It's it's what HTTP was to the internet, right? Um, this is just really changing the way that money works. Um, so let let me just hammer some other myths and misconceptions really quick, and we'll jump into the charts. The next one is Bitcoin has no invariant. An inherent value or as Mike just said in chat Bitcoin doesn't produce anything well I would actually stand argue with you Mike because there are so many um, startups and actual service businesses like real estate closings and and contracts and all this you know cryptocurrency 2.0 stuff that is creating real jobs in a, a whole new market um, Bitcoin why does Bitcoin have value well, the first thing is it has all the properties of money. Uh, and I'm not going to get into that because money is kind of like religion. Nobody really agrees on what's, what the right definition of money is. You know, Ben Bernanke um, has a totally different view than Ron Paul, right? You have some people that say gold is money, that's it, fiat currency. It has no inherent value because it's backed by, you know, the, the world's largest debtor government. You know, I'm not going to get into all that. 
the reason why Bitcoin has value is because people place trust and value in the Bitcoin protocol because it is totally transparent. Anybody can go in and audit the code and it's been around for six years. So if it was hackable or if people didn't trust it, it would have no value. But the fact that it has value today, six years after its inception says a lot. Um, some people, some people say Bitcoin is only, and there's a little mistake, for hackers and drug dealers, right? Some of you guys maybe heard of uh, the Silk Road, right? The big um, dark internet website that was selling guns and drugs and they were using Bitcoin to transact. You know, the media loves, loves this one, guys. They say Bitcoin is only for drug dealers and bad people, right? Well, do you know how much volume of drugs and guns are transaction, transacted in U.S. dollars every day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would venture to say in the, the tens of millions, if yeah, not more, right? More than Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the third one here, Bitcoin will crash to zero and disappear. Where's Bitcoin going to be in a year or 10 years from now? I don't know. Just like I didn't know where the internet was going to be in the mid-90s, nobody really knew. But one thing I can tell you is the big money, the big institutional guys, the big movers and shakers are taking Bitcoin seriously now. Pouring the money into um, it. Uh, yeah, Vanessa, so the question is, uh, did the previous chart, did I read that correctly? Did Bitcoin go from basically nothing to over a thousand? Yes, it did in just a couple of years. It's all over the place. It's very, very volatile. Um, so let me talk, let's go ahead and jump into the meat about trading. Okay. So hopefully you guys understand what Bitcoin is and it's really hard to do like an hour webinar and talk exactly about everything about how Bitcoin works, but I just want to talk about the trading aspect of this, okay? So when it comes to trading Bitcoin versus other markets, let's do some comparisons. So to trade stocks in the U.S., to be a pattern day trader, you need $25,000 in your account. With Bitcoin, there is no minimum. And if the price of Bitcoin is like, say, 300 bucks, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. It is divisible to the eight decimal place, um, which means, um, you know, you can trade literally any size you want. You can trade with $5, $100, $10,000, or a million dollars. Like, it, it is divisible, and there's no limits and no caps, and anyone in the world can open a Bitcoin account in under 10 minutes. I don't know of any country that you can't open a Bitcoin trading account. Um, in the U.S., we have anti-money laundering laws, so it's 10 minutes plus you know, the verification of your identity, but that's it. There's no government red tape. You don't have to get approved by a broker to trade um, or anything like that. There's significantly, and this is my favorite one. Yeah, this, this is, is really huge. kind of the magic sauce. Huge. Yeah, this is, this is one of the main reasons we're doing this. Uh, I'll just jump in because this is what we get so excited about. So much less trading competition compared to other markets. I always like to use this analogy. If you're trading Bitcoin and you know what we know, because it does trade differently than other markets. You can't just go in tomorrow and start trading Bitcoin and expect to win all your trades, but because it's, there's some there's some there's a learning curve obviously which we've which we've experienced over the last 18 months of trading. But when you know what we know, you are literally like Michael Jordan playing against a, a nine-year-old kid in elementary school. That's the <laughs> difference in skill level because in other markets you're going up against professional traders, head you know all the educators that you learn from. These guys are trading those markets. You're on the other side of them. You're going up against hedge fund managers. You're going up against the guys who trade for banks. You're going up against the people who trade for countries. I mean, governments, the best traders in the world. That's what's happening when you're trading in other markets. With Bitcoin, you're going up against like a 16-year-old kid, pimply-faced kid in his grandma's basement. That's who you're going up against. It's, like, it's, it's kind of like taking candy from a baby, and that's why we've been able to be so successful. And that's why when this bullet point comes up, Chris and I just get so excited. Chris, maybe you want to touch on that a little more or just move yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I'm a futures trader, right? I, I trade futures, I trade stocks, and this is the most excited I've been in a long time because I noticed a huge change in 2008, you know, when, when the financial crisis happened and when um, high-speed algorithms came into the markets, that changed the way that markets traded. I mean, what used to work before that was pretty much obsolete. If you go read a technical analysis book and you try to trade the markets, good luck, you're going to get hammered. Um, but you know, this is why Bitcoin is so nice is because it's not dominated by algos and professionals and institutional traders yet. Five years from now, 
might look a little bit different. That's why I'm like, well, look, we need to get this out to everybody now because, you know, you got to get in while the, the getting is good. That's kind of my yeah. You hear, you hear this a lot of other times now, but for Bitcoin, the time literally is now. In fact, the hundred million dollar investment just happened a couple of weeks ago when the three yeah. of the large, world's largest financial institutions. Uh, including the Winklevosses and the New York Stock Exchange, literally putting over $100 million into Bitcoin technology, actually backing one of the brokers. Right, Chris? Yep, absolutely. So, um, yeah, the exchanges are becoming more robust. Liquidity is getting better every single day. Um, and I'll show you my philosophy for how I actually trade this. Um, another one of my favorite bullet points is that Bitcoin is actually easier to short than stocks. You know, there were a couple of uh, big gainers and losers today that, you know, were actually really good shorts in the stock market. But a lot of people, if you didn't have the right broker, you couldn't get shares to short. With Bitcoin, that's really not the case. Um, there are exchanges that you can short through, and it's just like trading futures. You know, like futures you can short just as easy as, as going long, right? Um, so that's a, a huge benefit. <clears throat> and then bigger volatility equals more opportunity. And I'll show you actually a live chart here in a second. Um, but here's my three principles for finding the highest probability trade setups, okay? So the large majority of traders in Bitcoin are highly emotional and undisciplined, you know, a.k.a. dumb money, right? Um, and what this does is it creates, in, the, in price, it creates panics and unsustainable uptrends. So it creates extreme moves, which provides massive profit potential for me and my traders. Now, the other thing is, Okay, so that's on the, the upside. Conversely, in Bitcoin, the best liquidity comes when those big moves are driven by emotion. Okay, at other times, the liquidity is not so great. It's um, it's kind of like trading like a small cap, not a not a penny stock by any means. It's like trading a small cap stock. And when the volatility and liquidity is good, it's one of the best instru instruments to trade. When the liquidity is not there, you want to stay away from it. Um, so what I do is I just stay away during times of low volatility and low volume. Um, that's why on average, guys, so here's my time frame and here's my strategy. I only take about two trades a month in Bitcoin. My last trade worked out for 62%. Um, and on average, we're seeing moves of 15 to 30%. So I'm not, just so you know, I'm not scalping in and out of this. I'm not day trading in it. Um, this is something where if you want to put a label on it, I guess I'm swing trading it. My average hold time is two to five days, and I'm going for the bigger moves. And I, I don't spend much time actually looking at Bitcoin charts. I have alerts set. I have my plan ahead of time. And, um, yeah, so the third kind of uh, bullet point here, my third principle is some of the best risk-to-reward setups – actually come when I'm able to anticipate breaks of key levels. So it's kind of like looking for a breakout trade, but a little bit different. Um, so I hunt for my proprietary setups when we can get in before a trend starts. So I, I've kind of figured out some setups and some patterns that tend to work really well in Bitcoin that don't work really at all in the futures market and only a little bit in the stock market. Um, and I'll, So I'll give you some examples of these. This was um, a pretty big gain. This was actually earlier in January when Bitcoin washed out from about 300 bucks down into the 100s, and I bought it here at 188 and sent an alert out to my people, and we had 17 hours to actually get into this trade, and then the next day it was up over 220, uh, which was our initial target. Um, so that's an example of a bounce. I'll show you the live chart here in a second, but... Um, this I just want to show you an example of kind of low volume chop. You know, it kind of looks like a stock with low volume, where you know you don't really have any sustained high volume. It's just kind of low, choppy. Um, you know, this is when the market starts to thin out, and you don't want to trade during this time because you'll see a lot of like fake out breakdowns or fake out breakouts. Um, just like any other market, you want to stay away during these time periods. And then the third one, um, this was a breakout where I actually had a live class going on. This was pretty cool. Um, I had a live class for my students, and it just so happened to correlate with a plan that we had pre-set um, up. We had news come out, and I got an alert before probably 95% of the market knew what was going on. We were long. And then everybody ended up chasing up here in the, the 230s that we actually held this long all the way up to 304. So this was my second biggest trade to date, um, but 
the, the reason why is because I'm prepared. You know, it's kind of like um, whenever you have a plan in stock, right? You have an idea of what you're looking for, but it works just a little bit different because the market internals and the, and the market dynamics are different than the stock market. But once you learn it, it's pretty easy to, to spot. Um, so I'll answer the question, you know, does this really work? If you've been following me on Twitter, then you know what I've been doing. I've actually I've published all of my trades on Twitter and a lot of them on TradingView. This is actually how I got kind of big in the digital currency space is I was just so accurate with all of my predictions. And I just want to show you some real trades. You know, um, I, I've made dozens of trades over the past 18 months that I've been trading this. And um, I actually have been over 90% accurate. And I know that sounds like fluff or hype or whatever. I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not a real salesy guy, and I don't like to hype stuff up. Um, I've never had any accuracy like that in the futures market or the stock market. Okay, but there's a reason why I've been so accurate. And I wish it could, I could say it's because I'm such a great trader, but it actually has more to do with the market than anything else. How long will that last? I don't know. Um, so I just want to show you some trade examples. This was actually... Um, an example of buying against the herd. Okay, so I had a, a long and a short setup within the span of a couple of days. This was right after the China bubble. So this is when the price of Bitcoin went from 100 bucks over a thousand, and then it crashed. So I actually remember this day. I, I turned on the TV just because I was curious. I don't really watch CNBC or anything like that, but it was funny to see how every talking head. Went, it went from everybody was positive about Bitcoin to literally every single person was negative as it was crashing here. And I was licking my chops. I'm like, this is going to make for the best bounce trade of my life. It wasn't, but it turned out to be a pretty darn good one. Um, it was a 35% bounce after the, the panic kind of subs, subsided and stabilized there. I had a trade set up. Um, and then shortly after that, once the market started to stabilize, people were like, oh, wait, maybe we shouldn't freak out and maybe we should buy back up here around 1,000. And then what happened, as the buying hysteria kind of dissipated, I took a short position. Um, this was another short setup, just kind of a similar scenario after we topped out at 1,000, um, took a panic trade for 16%. Um, this was one of my losses. So... One thing that happened recently is the, the market was kind of bottoming out, and you can see this kind of bull flag scenario here. So if you look at the, the run and the pullback, there's a, it's really small in this chart, but there's actually a bull flag there. And what was happening, though, is you can see this massive downtrend, right? In hindsight, it looks kind of obvious, right? Everything works in hindsight. But in the live market, if what I was telling people is if Bitcoin's long-term price trend is going to reverse, this is where it's going to reverse from. But I said, look, guys, it's risky because we're going against a strong downtrend. So if it fails, quick exits. So that's what happened here. Had a small loss. Um, this was actually my biggest gain to date. Um, this was a 65% winner. This was the biggest panic that we've had in Bitcoin ever since its inception. So we had the, the first panic and then the secondary panic in uh, December 2013. And I was able to pick some up here at 502 and uh, rode out some of the position all the way up into the 800 range. So that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, so one thing that I did is a couple months ago, we actually put together a group, you know, Anthony and I partnered on this and said, man, you, you have to start helping some people actually trade this. So we did that. And I was hesitant at first because, you know, I'm already really busy with the, the futures and the stock trading. Um, but I did that and I'm glad I did because I get emails and tweets every day you know, these, these guys were new traders at the time, and um, I just grabbed these the other day. You know, people just telling me, hey, guys, after that live class we had, you know, they were up 10%. Um, John and Blake, both new traders. Um, you know, if you look on my Twitter feed, you can see all this. I, I post a lot of my play-by-play uh, my -play analysis, and I interact with a lot of my traders um, every day on Twitter. Um, but, you know, the idea here, guys, is just to be kind of open, even if you've never heard of Bitcoin, it is a great trading instrument, and I just want to show you uh, some charts real fast and show you where we're at. Um, and then, Anthony, I'll, I'll just turn it back over to you, and I'll, I'll show you actually where to where to go to find the charts, okay? Because it's not something that you can just plug into TradeStation yet. Um, well, while you're pointing that up, I'll just say one thing I want to point yeah. out as as, uh, as, as you as you as we're watching the trades. It doesn't matter 
uh, what Bitcoin's doing. So as you saw before, we said you know Bitcoin is actually easier to short than stocks. Um, some of Chris's most profitable trades have been shorts. So we're kind of trying to bring the point home that it doesn't matter if Bitcoin's up or Bitcoin's down. It doesn't matter if it's trading at you know five hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars, or fifty dollars. It doesn't matter because in between those prices, we're making money all the way along, whether it be up or whether it be down. And that track record of ninety-two percent is. Um, is, is, a, is a lot to do with the market itself. Like Chris said, it's very, very volatile, which makes for much easier trading. One thing that's important to understand, though, is it doesn't trade just like stocks and equities. There's a learning curve, which we've been able to figure out, and the setups and, and the approach and the techniques are different. But once you understand what they are, once you learn what they are, it just makes for, for phenomenal trading, the best trading I think Chris and I have seen in, in any market over the last decade or so. But anyway, with that, Chris, go back to the live charts and keep uh, keep showing Keep, keep, keep the demo up. Thanks, man. All right. Can you guys hear me? Let me just get a quick why. I just want to make sure I saw somebody say uh, the audio is cut now. I think we're good. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right. So here's kind of where Bitcoin is today. I'm going to scroll way, way, way out. So this is going back to 2013, right? Had that meteoric rise. It's from a Of major crashes, stands for a while, has been down, downtrending, had some big washouts, big recoveries, big spikes, and now we're down around 200 bucks. If I had never heard about Bitcoin and I looked at this chart, you know what I think? I think penny stock, one and done, 2013, basically pleading for people. And the video is still up. It's on my YouTube channel, if you don't believe me. I posted a video right about here, basically pleading for people not to buy Bitcoin here. Right. And again, in hindsight, this looks easy, but I can promise you at the time, everybody who knew about Bitcoin wanted to buy because they thought it was going to ten thousand dollars a coin. It was <laughs> insane. And I was pleading with people saying, guys, look, I get it. I believe in Bitcoin, but you cannot buy this. What actually caused this rally was not healthy. And that what actually did cause it was a his buying hysteria in China. It was the Chinese that actually drove this thing up. And ultimately what caused it to crash. So what I told people was like, look, guys, believe it or not, high prices in a new form of currency are actually not a good thing. It's not healthy for the long-term sustainability of the currency. I'm actually happy where Bitcoin is right now. Two, three hundred bucks. I don't care if it goes below a hundred or over five hundred. As long as it's moving, I'm going to trade it. And I can tell you over the past six months since last summer, you can see this big downtrend. We've had some pretty great shorts and some really nice rebound trades as well. So, you know, just because it's downtrending doesn't mean that there's no liquidity and doesn't mean that there's not trading opportunity. In fact, you know, my, I, I love this saying that says the, you know, the market takes the stairs up and the elevator down. So if you're just a buy and hope person, you're probably leaving two thirds of your profit on the table. Yeah, that's exactly why some of the shorts have been some of our most successful trades. Because when Bitcoin comes down, it comes down quick. And then, of course, the media jumps on it. You know, it's not like the it's not like the whole media is jumping on one stock. That's why stocks are not necessarily as volatile. But man, when they when it starts falling and the media jumps on it, it falls even further. And that's when again we've taken so many of our most profitable trades. Yeah. So so I'll just show you quickly where Bitcoin is now in, in my last trade and what I think is uh, is going to happen, and then I'll, I'll pass it back over to you. Um, so this was my first alert of the year. I bought right here at 188. So, you know, again, in hindsight, it looks easy, but I did get very, very close to the bottom of the market. And then um, we actually had another trade alert and another, this was actually in a live class. Everybody was trading this with me. We had another um, trade and an entry here at 220. And then there was actually some news. There was a news catalyst right here where it went parabolic. And this is where we took our, uh, our final covers actually here at 304. And again, I know I'm, I'm just putting arrows on the chart, but this, these are actually all trade alerts that I sent out ahead of time. Um, this isn't like hindsight trading. I actually bought here and sold up here. Um, and then I've been flat for the month of February because if you notice right now, we're just kind of in this channel. I have a plan set up. And there's a couple of trade possibilities that my team's prepared for. Um, but, you know, again, you don't want to try to overtrade this chop. And if you do, 
you know, you're going to battle with slippage and some stuff like that. So instead of overtrading it, I just wait for these really, really big moves where I, I know that the probabilities are pretty good that we're going to have a, a move of 15% or more. That's kind of my threshold. I don't want to trade for anything less than a 15% move. And the liquidity is there, the liquidity is there as well. <clears throat> Yeah, and yeah, so this is nothing like Forex, you know, where you're trading with the Euro, US dollar. In fact, I'll tell a funny story real quick. Um, I had a great time a couple of weeks ago shorting FXCM after it had lost all that money on uh, the Swiss franc. Um, I have a pretty big disdain for Forex brokers because they do a lot of stuff like trading against their clients. Um, hello, you know. so. Uh, to date, I haven't seen that in the Bitcoin market, which is good. And I do evaluate a lot of the exchanges, and this works differently, guys. So just – you're probably thinking, well, how do I open an account? You don't actually need a broker to open an account. You trade right through the exchanges. That's huge. There's no middleman. There's no red tape. There's no application process. You sign up. You fund your account. You're good to go. If you're in the States or you know somewhere where – they have anti-money money laundering laws. You do have to verify your identity, um, which makes sense because that will just keep Bitcoin out of the hands of all the drug dealers <laughs> and into people like you and me. Uh, so it's it stays viable. But um, so that's that's where Bitcoin's at right now, guys. Um, we'll have some time in a, a second to answer questions, but I, I hope this is helpful. And um, you know, I just encourage you guys, even if this is something that's brand new to you. You know, take this seriously because you're going to hear a lot more about Bitcoin over the next couple of years. And um, it's definitely, definitely a, a trading vehicle that's fun to trade and it can be profitable if you uh, if you learn how to do it right. So, um, but with that said, you know, like I said, Anthony and I partnered a few months ago. We initially opened up a group um, of people to actually trade with. And I was really hesitant at first because I was already so busy, but... It worked out. It was wildly successful. I'm having a great time doing it. And um, so we do have a program that if you want to trade this with me, I'd love to have you in our group. Um, it really is a small group, um, just a couple dozen people, and we keep it capped because I give access to me. But this is kind of my philosophy. Have you ever heard the, you know, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Well, that really is my philosophy. You know, I've been doing trading education for uh, quite a while, I guess seven, eight years. Um, and my philosophy is to really give you the fish. So I do trade alerts, which I don't do in any other market. Um, but then even more importantly is I want to teach you how to fish. Okay. I want to ha help you have the skills and the confidence to trade Bitcoin like a professional. Uh, because if you go in and you trade it like a 16 year old kid in his mom's basement, you're going to get run over. But if you approach it like a professional, I think you're going to do well. Um, and so, like I said, I mean, I've never done any kind of trade alert before just because day trading futures and stocks, I feel like it doesn't work. It's too fast. By the time I send an alert out, it's too late. You have to be prepared ahead of time. With Bitcoin, the time frame's a little bit different. Um, so that's why I've actually agreed to do this. And Anthony, I'll, I'll pass it over to you and you can explain uh, what we've got. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So, I mean, that's exactly what, what, we, what we've done. So, Chris, you know, when I, I literally... I, I pretty much twisted Chris's arm into doing this because when we first talked about Bitcoin, he was having such success trading it. And, you know, what I do is I partner with uh, really, really good traders like Chris and help them kind of get the word out. Chris is kind of really busy focused on his actual trading because he actually makes, you know, part of his income, a big a big part of his income is actually trading, which is nice because I, can, I can't tell you how many trading gurus don't make any money trading. All they do is sell courses and that's how they make their money. Chris is not that guy, I can tell you that. And if you haven't heard of Chris, it's because he spends his time trading and teaching, but not promoting himself. So I was able to convince him to put this program together. And what we've done is we put together the Bitcoin Trading Academy Platinum Mentoring Program. So with that, what you get, what you get in the Platinum Mentoring Program is you get a full year of our premium trade alerts. And like Chris said, he's never done this before. But the reason we can do this in Bitcoin, it wasn't he didn't we didn't just decide to do trade alerts in Bitcoin because it's Bitcoin. We actually did them because, because we're swing trading Bitcoin, there's a ton of time, but from the time the alert comes out to the time those trades are triggering, it can be up to a day. So the last, the 62% trade, our most recent trade, which was just a week and a half ago or so, there we, all of our, all the um, students had 17 hours before that alert triggered. So 
a ton of time. So highest probability trade alerts you get, and you also get all the analysis well in advance, so you're always prepared for the big moves. So if you're someone that is working full time or travels a lot or you know um, just, just doesn't have all the time to trade, this is the most perfect market. I can tell you right now that we only spend about 30 to 60 minutes a month managing our trades. So it's literally the best market as far as um, you know time. Yet you know it also the best market as far as profitability and accuracy. So you're going to get alerted when we get into entry, enter, and exit every single trade. And like Chris mentioned a minute ago, he actually gives you his email address, and that's not something he, that he does for any other products except at the you know the super super high levels when you do a private mastermind with him. So because it's Bitcoin, because we're keeping this group very very small, you're going to get to um, interact with Chris directly. So you really get to learn from the master, if you will. So that's something that. You can't even really put a value on, you know, if you did, it would be a really high number. We have a value we, we attach to it, but it's really just hearsay. The bottom line is you get his email access, you get to interact with Chris directly, and you rarely can do that with the person who's at his caliber or his level and, and uh, where he's at. So that's what's the other thing we give you. The trade alerts, you get access to Chris. You also get our eight-part live webinar series. So that's pretty self-explanatory, but what we do is, Every week or every other week or depending on how the markets are rolling, we have a full live webinar where you get to interact not only with Chris but also with the other traders on there. What's really unique about Bitcoin is it, it, it is its own community. So it's not, like, it's not like stocks and options where there's tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people trading. Bitcoin is a small, so, sort of an underground kind of community. Not really underground. It's certainly heading to mainstream, but it's not there yet. So you meet a lot of really, really interesting folks and a lot of really, really smart people because these are the people at the forefront of technology, at the forefront of business, really, and trading. So you're amongst some really interesting people and some really intelligent people. So you get to interact with Chris. You get to interact with, the, with our very small yet very tight community. And, of course, you, in, in the webinars, we analyze the recent trades and give you all the market forecasts. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. This is something we actually haven't talked about so far. If you are a complete beginner to Bitcoin, guess what? So is almost everyone else who's joined our program. So you don't have to feel like you're going to get left behind in any way. You're in really, really good company. And if you're a beginner even to trading itself, this is the best place to start because, as we said earlier, Bitcoin is an easier market to trade. So if you're a, beginning, a beginner trader, and you're kind of, it's, it's kind of a daunting task to figure out, well, what market do I want to focus on? What stocks do I want to focus on? What futures? What currencies? There's just so much out there. Well, Bitcoin is just one instrument, and as a market, it trades so much easier. So if you're a beginner to trading, there's really no better place to start than right here. So we uh, start with the beginner lessons and move on to advanced trading lessons. By the time you're through our eight-part live webinar series, you're going to be pretty much a Bitcoin trading expert. We really move you from the beginning on up to the intermediate levels, and then the advanced, and then look to the mastery level in this series. And of course, you can ask unlimited Q&A, talk to Chris, and interact with other traders, and um, they're all recorded as well. So if you miss them, no worries there. But we're still not done. So in addition to all of this, we want to give you our on-demand video training. So um, we start out with the Bitcoin basics, and that's literally because there are so many beginners to Bitcoin. We literally start out with what is a Bitcoin? Where do I open my Bitcoin account? What are the best brokers or exchanges rather to get my Bitcoin account? How do I store my Bitcoin? Like the most basic, basic, basic stuff. And that's what Bitcoin basics are. And then from there we move on to our trading foundational videos where you can really understand how that works and develop a strong foundation for your Bitcoin trading. And then our third level is our advanced mastery classes. And this is really where you get up to the levels of top professional traders. The nice thing about this on-demand video training is obviously it's available 24-7. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's broken down into really nice bite-sized chunks. So literally videos are 10, 12, 15 minutes. You can watch them on your lunch break. You can watch them on the weekend. You can watch them after work or, or, or wherever. You can watch them on your iPhone on the way to work. Um, not if you're driving, hopefully. But um, you get the idea. I mean, this is you can, you can get through this. I mean, if you're, if you're really excited, you can get through this in a weekend if you're, you know, you're spending a, you know, half a day watching this. Or you can get through it over the period of 10 days or two weeks. You go at your own pace. Um, so this is the really nice part about this. You're really going to understand everything about Bitcoin by the time you get through all this. And the other thing is trading videos are often really boring. I sat and watched them myself. They tend to put me to sleep. This is different. This is Bitcoin. It's exciting. You're going to find yourself wanting to watch that next video. So you're going to get through these uh, literally like a breeze. Okay, so bottom line, how much? So obviously, um, we're, we're, we're going to reveal the price in just a moment here. But, there, but before we do, there's obviously three options when it comes to learning something or learning a new skill, specifically related to trading. You could try on your own. 
And I did that. It didn't work out real well for me, I can tell you right now. Um, I, I really turned my financial fortune around because I just came in, you know, guns a-blazing, thinking I could figure it out myself. And I know that there are people on this webinar that can relate to what I'm saying because it's really difficult if you try it, if you try it your own. Even though Bitcoin's an easier market to trade, it's different than stocks and options. You're not going to have the same skill set that um, obviously we have after doing this for a couple of years. So I, I just don't recommend that in any market, regardless of Bitcoin or, or anyone. So there's option one, number one. Number two, you can do what my dad does. You can listen to uh, the Talking Heads on TV. CNBC is on in my house all the time, or in my parents' house, I should say. And you know, whenever I go over, whenever I'm there, whenever we're together, uh, the, it's always on. That's how my dad likes to trade. And you know, it, it's good for him sometimes. It's not so good other times. I wouldn't recommend it because you'll, you'll be riding the yo-yo probably the wrong way. You'll be buying when it's going down and selling when it's going up. So uh, I wouldn't recommend that. And of course, the third option is to um, get on in with, uh, with, with us and, and follow our strategy follow our trade alerts, get into the live webinar series, and really understand how to trade Bitcoin like a profession, like we're doing. So let's just give you a quick re recap of what you're getting. So in, in the Bitcoin Platinum Mentoring Program, you get the full training curriculum, you get the Bitcoin Basics, the Bitcoin Trading Foundation, the Bitcoin Mastery. These are our premium editions, and there's a $997 value for all of that right, the, right there, the on-demand video education. It's really well put together. We work really, really hard on this, and you're going to absolutely love it. In addition to that, we have our eight-part live webinar training series. Of course, we get to interact with the other traders and Chris and learn live, live market conditions and whatnot, and that's worth another $792. And of course, you get our, our full years with the live trade alerts. We put a value of $100 a month. I mean, we could have put anything there, really. I mean, really, to say they're worth $100 is probably undervaluing, the out, undervaluing them based on the accuracy in the past, but you know, we could say 200 300 We just threw at eight at 100 and then you get private email access to Chris as another thousand dollar value and again same with that it's probably easily easily worth so much more than that so the total value for the program is thirty nine hundred eighty nine dollars so just under four thousand dollars and that's a conservative number based on how profitable Bitcoin has been in the past and and how excited we are and how great of a market it is to trade the total value just under four thousand dollars we're not gonna charge that today though bottom line what's a proven trading strategy work well High-end professional trading systems sell between five and fifteen thousand dollars. This is easily as high-end of a trading system as you could get. But at the end of the day, if you go to a trade show, you go to the Forex Expo or Traders Expo in New York or Las Vegas, and I've been to dozens of those, and you see people, you know, standing at their booths and selling their systems. Uh, some of them may be good, but you're still going up against hedge fund managers and banks in in the stocks market and equity and futures markets and forex markets. And the odds are still so so stacked against you, even with the best system. So even if you're spending three, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, you're still going up against professionals, and it's so difficult. So bottom line, our goal is to make this affordable for anyone who's serious about trading Bitcoin and help you see a massive return on your investment in the trading. So what we're doing today is we have a price tag of nineteen hundred ninety-seven dollars. That's what we're going out to market with our program, but we're not charging that today. Today we're doing something special. We're doing something different. Uh, we're putting together a special offer. It's a very, very limited offer because you're one of Trading Pub's private subscribers. We're making this one-time special offer, and we're chopping that price in half. So $4,000 value easily, conservatively, that we're going out to market at $2,000. But for the next 30 minutes, you can actually get everything we've shown you for $997. But there is a caveat. We have uh, hundreds of people on this webinar. We're limiting it to the first 25 subscribers. And the reason we do that is because of what Chris just said. Um, we have actually, we launched our program about three or four months ago now, and this is only the second or third time we've ever made this available at all, period. So in other words, it's, you can't just walk up and buy it. It's closed. It's straight up closed, and that's because we can only allow so many people in because we keep those groups really, really intimate. We keep the webinar small. You get Chris's uh, email access. You get to interact with Chris and other subscribers as well. So only for the first 25 people uh, are we actually going to allow in, and for the next 30 minutes. So that's pretty much what the price comes down to. I hope that you um, see value in that. I hope that you enjoyed our presentation. I hope you understood or understand a lot more about Bitcoin. Um, we're going to take some questions as well, but let's just go over the payment options right now. So there's a one-time payment, of course, of 997. Uh, one of the cool things that we do is we actually allow you to pay with Bitcoin. And the other couple of times that we brought this out and we opened it up for a day or so, we got a bunch of Bitcoin payments. So we know there's Bitcoin fans out there, and if that's you, 
and you already have a Bitcoin account, we'll certainly accept um, payment in Bitcoin. We also have a payment plan option as well. That's three payments for $397. It's going to obviously cost you more than doing a one-time payment. So we advise the one-time payment. But if you want to do a three-pay plan, we also make that available as well because at the end of the day, we want people who are serious to get involved with us. We want to create successful traders and success stories. We have so many of them, but we'll never have enough. Right, Chris? Yeah, man. It's uh, It's been wildly successful in the first group, and that's why it was just a test. But, you know, that, that 25 number is real. Like, we're not just out selling as many of these as we can. I, I want a small group because I am giving out uh, access, and I can only really uh, help so many people at one time. So that is a real number. And, and once we get 25 in this class, um, we are going to shut it down. Let's look, bring up the links now so we can go ahead and get access to it. So. Um, if you like what you saw, if you want to be involved in our intimate classes and you want to uh, trade alongside of us and get our trade alerts and really learn uh, how Bitcoin works, what, oh, there we go. Get those links back. Uh, go to Chris. Du oh, they just disappeared again. Chris, there du we go. Yep, it's okay. back. <laughs> it makes it hard to, to sign up if you can't see the links. I'm going to read them out <laughs> before they disappear again. So it's Chris Dunn with two ends dot com slash pub p u b. That's where you're going to get your special discounted promotional code for the half price at nine nine seven. If you want to pay with Bitcoin, go to chrisdunn.com slash bitcoin50, and you'll get instant access to all the training materials and all the trade alerts. We say trade alerts. Obviously, there's no trade alerts coming out like in the next five minutes because those happen when they happen, but uh, same with the live webinars. The, the next scheduled live webinar will be coming up very, very soon, and you definitely want to be in for that, but you will be able to access all the in-demand live video training right away. The trade alerts come as they come, and the webinars will be com coming up soon. Now, if you go to chrisdunn.com slash pub, you will find the two payment options there. So the 997 and the three pay of 397 uh, per payment. And of course, Bitcoin, there's only the one pay option. So chrisdunn.com slash Bitcoin 50 is where you're getting with Bitcoin. So we're going to turn it to some questions now. But before we do, I'll just say that uh, hopefully you learned something here today. That was our main goal is to educate you. Uh, hopefully you now understand a little bit more about Bitcoin, why it's not uh, what the media says, if you've heard any negative things about it, like it's going away, that's not happening. It's only, you know, again, being come, become more and more ingrained in the fiber of society, really. It's just going to grow with people like Branson and Bill Gates and all these other huge, you know, titans of industry investing money literally into it. It isn't going anywhere, and the opportunity to trade it right now has never, never, ever been greater because now with the New York Stock Exchange literally investing in Bitcoin, uh, in the Bitcoin technology, it's only growing and it's only proving that it's it's here to stay. So the biggest opportunity to trade Bitcoin is right now, because like Chris said, in a year or three or five, it may not be the same way because that's when the institutions are going to start trading, and who knows, maybe the hedge funds will be in there, and it's not going to be this good forever. That much I know. Just don't know how long it'll be this good for. But um, I would just say, if you like what you saw and you like money, you like profiting and succeeding trading, this is where you want to be. So uh, with that, Chris, why don't we turn it over to some questions? Yeah, awesome. Um, Al says, where can you open a Bitcoin account? So the way that this works, guys, is there is no Bitcoin broker. Okay, so you can actually trade directly through the exchanges. This is one of my favorite things. So you're not going to have brokers that are like trading against you like you get in the, the Forex market. <clears throat> so basically, um, anybody can open an account in any country around the world. Yeah, and there's actually a website lost our sound I think I can still hear you, Chris I think you're still coming through I think so what I'm noticing when people are talking about the audio is that the odd person here or there can't hear us but I think the most most of the group actually can oh, okay can, uh, can you guys hear me let me just get a quick why in the chat room just to make sure you can hear me yes we got one yes let's go okay with that I think you might be cutting out in and out a little bit. So I apologize for that, guys. Um, it's the it's it's the internet in Austin's fault. It's not our fault. I promise. You. <laughs> it's definitely not Canadian. Internet. No, here in Canada we have rock solid internet. And there's no problems at all. 
All right. Um, so I'm not sure if my audio came through with the uh, the Bitcoin account question. Um, so I'll ask, where can we get a uh, open a Bitcoin account? Basically, um, you can open an account in any country around the world in less than 10 minutes. Um, in the states, if you're in the U.S., you got to verify your identity um, just because of anti-money laundering laws. But the the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is you don't have to tr uh, trade through a broker. You trade directly through the exchange. So unlike the Forex market, you're not going to fight against your broker who's actually trading against you, um, which is one of my biggest beefs with the Forex market. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, anybody can open an account. You can trade with as little as five bucks, and you don't have to buy one Bitcoin. Like if you look at the price of Bitcoin at $200, you don't have to buy one Bitcoin. You can trade with a fraction. It's uh, divisible down to the eighth decimal place. So you can trade with as little or as much as you want. Uh, what's the platform to trade on? Um, so I use uh, basically you trade as far as execution goes, you trade through the exchange's websites or their platforms. Um, and this is the beautiful thing. It's so new. It's not even on the toss or trade station or ninja trader. It's not on any of the, uh, the platforms yet. It's directly through the exchanges. And then I use TradingView.com for charts. I'm actually one of the top contributors on TradingView. I have tens of thousands of views and stuff on my uh, my Bitcoin predictions um, and thousands of followers on there. So uh, that's what I use for my charting. And then I, I use execution through the exchanges. And that's one thing in the Bitcoin basics that we cover is how to set up an account, um, how to buy your first Bitcoins, how to short Bitcoin, um, you know, how to chart Bitcoin, all that good stuff. And it's, it's a lot easier than any other market that I've set up before um, just because it's, it's quick and it's simple and there's no red tape. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited about it. Chris, uh, I was asking if you can open a practice account. I know one thing, we can comment on that, but then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about just how little you can actually open an account with. Yeah. So there's no need to sim trade this because you can trade with, like I said, like five bucks if you want to. And in fact, I think sim trading is, is not a waste of time. I mean, it's a, it's good for learning and practicing. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't know how you're going to trade mentally unless you're trading with real capital, even if it's five bucks, right? So that's the beautiful thing is you don't have to trade like a hundred share blocks or a full a full, an e-mini futures contract, right? You don't have to risk 50 or 100 bucks. You can risk just pennies if you want to. And the fun thing about that is when you're getting started is, you know, well, even if you're trading with like 50 cents or a dollar, it's just more fun when it's real money. Even though it's next to nothing, it's real. So it's like, it's like a practice account with real money. And like Chris said, it's just a matter of minutes to open an account. It takes the same amount of time to open a live real Bitcoin account as it does to open a demo account, you know, for stocks or Forex or futures or whatever. So except you get to fund it with real money. And you could literally fund it if you wanted to with five bucks. You can fund it with five bucks, five, 50 bucks, 500 bucks. 5,000 bucks or 5 million bucks. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want. So that's the other advantage. There's so many advantages Bitcoin offers as a trading market for actually trading it, but there's advantages just like we just talked about as far as opening your account, it's trading with really, really small amounts as you learn, which just basically makes it more fun. Because when you're trading in a demo yeah. account, it's less fun than if you're trading even with a few dollars as you're learning. I see another question there about, about uh, leverage. leverage. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you can use leverage through most of the exchanges. Um, it's not insane like 50 to 1 for Forex, but it is good. You know, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, um, depending on what exchange you're trading through. So, yeah, you can, you can trade on a margin account and, uh, and get some leverage. All right, guys. Well, I hope everybody uh, had a great time today. I certainly enjoyed putting this on for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me. Um, otherwise, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the trading classes. And, um, yeah, we'll see you in the next webinar, which is coming up real soon. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your time, and, and hopefully you walked away learning something about Bitcoin. And if you like what you saw, don't don't forget to sign up and join our small group at 25, chrisdunn.com slash pub for playing with real money.
or chrisdunn.com slash bitcoin50. And um, you'll, if any more questions that you have, of course, once you sign up, we'll uh, certainly be happy to answer those for you. And uh, most of the questions are answered in those initial videos. But if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us uh, before, and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Is there, uh, do you want to take one last question, Chris, before we go? Yeah, sure. Just want to see uh, where, um, I think some people may have been losing audio, but um, let's see. Uh, someone's asking if we're only going to cover Bitcoin in the group or if we discuss futures or Forex. Uh, if friends asking that question, no, this is just for Bitcoin. This is just for Bitcoin traders. Uh, so there you go. Uh, there's also um, a question about liquidity, um, how much volume exists. Um, the nice thing about the way we trade Bitcoin is that liquidity is never, ever an issue because we only take our trades when there's uh, a, a sufficient amount, tremendous liquidity. So we don't scalp or day trade in the middle of the night, if you will. So liquidity is absolutely not an issue for the way that we place our trades. And that's one of the things that you want to be careful of. If you go at it on your own, you could find yourself in a, in, stuck in a, in a bad spot. So one or the other, you know, an advantage of, of, of following what we do. So there's something else as well. Um, someone's asking where we can open a Bitcoin account. There are a tremendous number of, of exchanges you can do that through. But in the Bitcoin basics, we actually uh, Chris vets them, and he talks about all the ones you want to, uh, the good ones and the bad ones. And there are bad brokers, just like anything. There's bad, you know, forex brokers, and some of them have gone under. It's no different with Bitcoin. Uh, some Bitcoin brokers have gone under, and we talk about those and why they did, and who to who to, who to go with, who's insured. So, for example, um, uh, there are insured brokers right now, so you don't have to worry about that. We talk about who they are and, and where you want to be, um, and uh, so there's no worries there. Um, someone's asking, let's see what else, I'm just trying to see some other quick questions. Minimum investment, we covered that one. Uh, there you go. So I think, I think that covers most of the questions. As far as charting goes, there's free charting for Bitcoin. We also get into that in the Bitcoin Basics videos. So if you want to trade Bitcoin, um, you don't have to pay for any charting system. So that's, that's another nice Yeah, and you don't have to pay for data either. That's the beautiful thing. So there we go. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, so uh, last question here, someone's asking, what uh, Al's asking, what specific times to trade Bitcoin. Bitcoin never closes. So they say that Forex is 24-7, but it's not. It actually closes on the weekend. Bitcoin literally doesn't close. So you can trade it any time you want, any day of the week. Uh, Christmas, New Year's, it just doesn't close. So there's, there's another advantage, too. If you, if you like markets, you're bored on Christmas Day, you ate too much turkey, you can go ahead and play some Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers it for now. If you have any more questions, we're here. Uh, please shoot, shoot us over um, an email or shoot, and, and uh, get in touch. We'll be happy to answer them. But with that, um, thank you all so much for your time. Um, and hopefully you'll sign up and join us. Chris, I'll just turn it over to you to say goodbye. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Uh, thank you, everybody. I had a great time being here. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the, uh, the trading room. And reach out to me if you have any questions. And, um, yeah, thanks to uh, the Trading Pub team. And, uh, yeah, have a great week, great long weekend, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take okay. care. Bye, everyone.